are greater than the sum of all our problems, all our trials, all our tribulations, all the storms that we go through. You are stronger, you are mightier, you are holier, and we clap our hands and we praise you today. Come on, everybody. Clap those hands. Give them a shout of praise. How many people are happy to be here? Thank you so much for coming out. Would you greet the person on your right and say, you're looking good today. That's right. I want to welcome you all to the happiest place here on earth. Thank you so much for being here. You could have been somewhere else, but you put God first. Thank you for that. Thank you for honoring God. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, if this is your first time, how many first timers, by the way? First timers, first timers, we want to acknowledge you. We want to say hi to you. Hello, everybody say hello. Hello. After the feast, we got a gift for you outside of the lobby. We'd love to connect with you and engage with you, all right? So head down to the lobby. But you know, as I was saying, if this is your first time to be here, maybe you haven't been here for a couple of weeks, we are still in our series on angels and demons. How about this series? Has God been speaking to you in this series? Has it been powerful? Been talking about temptations, superstition, and oppression, how to deal with the supernatural. And in the next two Sundays, it's going to be even more special because what we're going to do is we are going to spend two Sundays to talk about a very important subject that deals still with fighting the devil we want to talk about the armor of God how you are protected by God at every different areas of your life and in the next few minutes what I want to preach to you about is something that's very practical but if you receive it it's gonna be powerful to change your life it'll answer the question how do you keep on winning with your fight against the devil because the devil's not going to just stop at one time. He's going to try with every opportunity to keep on coming so that he can dismantle you from the destiny that God has prepared for you. So how do you keep on winning in your fight against the devil? What weapons do you use again and again against the forces of darkness? That's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're ready, how many people are ready? Raise your hand. There we go. If you're ready, let's do this together as a family, all right? In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stretch your hands out in the air and say this with me. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. Because I am blessed. I am blessed in the world. In Jesus' name. that in a few moments but I want to pose a question to all of you how many of you know or maybe you've heard of people or maybe it's even you where you might have attended maybe a retreat one time in your life or could have been an I love life retreat here at the feast or a Lux couples getaway or maybe even a Jesus encounter or charisma conference or maybe even just the feast you know you walked into the feast God spoke to you and then you came out and you felt like you were so high in the spirit. You know, you were walking on cloud nine. You ever feel like that? Yes. You were so inspired. And you know, things changed in your life. You stopped, stopped cheating. You stopped lying. You stopped cursing. You stopped smoking. You stopped drinking and all these things. You know, you turned into a new leaf. But then maybe after a few weeks, maybe a few months, or maybe even a few years, you know, for some reason, 
you just went back to your old ways. You went back to your old sins. Are you familiar with this? That's what we call, my friends, backsliding. Everybody say backsliding. backsliding. It happens, you know, it happens. Backsliding is when you revert back to your old ways, ways that you've, you've, you've turned away from. But for some reason, you keep on coming back. I want, I want us to answer that question. Why do people backslide? We're going to find the answer here from the book of Luke, in chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. Can we all read? Ready, set, go. Put it on screen. When an evil spirit goes out of a person, it travels over a dry country, looking for a place to rest. If it can't find one, it says to itself, I will go back to my house. So it goes back and finds the house clean and all fixed up. Then it goes out and brings seven other spirits, even worse than itself. And they came and come out and live there. So when it is all over, that person is in worse shape than at the beginning. My question is, why do you think that that story, why do you think the demons came back? Anybody? Because the house was already clean, because maybe they refurbished the house, maybe they repainted it or refurbished it, added a little bit of furniture, put in an LED screen. Whatever theory that you might come up with, here's what I think. Didn't matter that the house was brand new, or just as the Bible said, you know, it was clean and all fixed up. The only problem was the house might have been brand new, the house might have been reordered, reassembled, but the problem was it was still empty. There was nobody living inside of it. That's why the demons came back. And to make things worse, he brought seven other friends who was more wicked than he was. A philosopher by the name of Aristotle said that nature abhors a vacuum. Abhors mean, abhor is to hate, is to loathe. What it means is that space does not want to be empty. So if there's any space in your life, you know what it wants? It wants to be filled up. It needs to be filled up. But the question is, will it be filled up with a good thing or a bad thing? That's what we're trying to answer. All right, a lot of people, whenever I talk to people, one of the best excuses that I hear of, whenever I invite people to the feast, you know what they usually tell me? They tell me, oh, Brother Odi, I'll go to the feast maybe when my life is fixed. I'll try to get rid of my sins first. You know, I'll try to clean myself up, clean up my act, and then maybe I'll get to encounter the Lord. You know what I say? I tell them, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, my friend, but that doesn't work. Because here's the fact, all right? It's impossible for you to remove a bad habit in your life. It's impossible. The only way that you can remove a bad habit is if you replace it with a good habit. In the same way, it's impossible for you to get rid of the evil spirits that are all around you. It's just impossible. Why? Because they'll just keep on returning again and again. The only way that you can get rid of the, Holy, of, of the, of the evil spirit is if you replace it with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Go ahead. Clap your hands. That's a beautiful point. Here's the good news. The Bible says that in 1 Corinthians that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can you say that with me? My body, My body. is the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's right. So, you're not empty. There's someone living inside of you. And here's the good part, all right? We as Filipinos, we have this crazy culture. I don't know if you know this, but I used to remember back in the old days. They don't have this as much anymore, but maybe you'll see it every now and then. They used to have in mansions, in palaces, in big houses, in exclusive subdivisions, ways on how they protect the house. And it is very old school. Two very crazy inventions that we Filipinos would use. Nowadays, you know, you'd have CCTVs, cameras everywhere. You can log on to the internet. You can look at it from your phone, see what's happening inside, right? And then you'd have, you know, different kinds of sensors that are so sensitive that even when a leaf falls from the tree, the alarms can go off. It's just crazy, right? It's so high tech. But back in the day, for the old schoolers, all right? Back in the day, you only had two things that you needed to protect your house. The first one was barbed wire. You remember that? barbed wire all across the walls 
barbed wire nakalagay sa bahod. Diba? People were so scared of climbing over. Because if the barbed wires did kill you, you know what will kill you? The tetano will kill you. That's right. And people pre that prevented a lot of intruders, a lot of burglars from coming in. And the second greatest invention of Filipinos after barbed wire, you know what it was? Broken glass. Embedded in quick dry cement. Bubog sa pakod. My gosh. Why, why am I sharing this? The Bible specifically says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know what that means? That means that you are God's house. You are God's house. So if you are God's house, God's going to do everything necessary to protect His property. In fact, a lot of us sometimes, you know, whenever we leave the feast, we forget something that's so important whenever we step out, you know. Monday, we're feeling high. Tuesday, we're feeling inspired. Wednesday, maybe we have a bad encounter with traffic. Thursday, we're feeling a little low. And maybe Friday, we're struggling already. We're running on empty in the spirit. You know why that happens? Because you forget that when you walk out of the feast, when you walk out of church, you're not walking out empty-handed. You're not walking out alone. Somebody walks out with you and his name is Jesus. You know what happens when Jesus walks up into your heart? When Jesus walks up into your heart, he turns your heart into his house. And you know that when it's his house, he'll protect his investment. He'll protect his property. He'll put up a fence. He'll put up a barbed wire. He'll put up a broken glass to make sure that when the enemy comes and tries to enter his property, He'll say, you're not welcome here. This is my property. This is my child. This is my son. This is my daughter. That's right. Here's my closing message. You know why God does that? Not only because He loves you, but because now that you know that you're His, that he's your, you're, you're his property, God is going to fight for you. He's going to fight for your battles. He's going to fight for your wars, the things that you can't do. So don't ever be so preoccupied with fighting with the devil. Be more preoccupied with following Jesus. We are so preoccupied, my friends, sometimes with warring against the enemy that's on the outside when we should be more preoccupied with welcoming Jesus on the inside. God is fighting for you. He's fighting for you. Tell the person beside you, God is fighting for you. God wants to protect his investment today. And that's you. That's you. I pray that you take hold this message as you leave the feast today. Can you bow down your heads? Let me pray for you real quick. <coughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much for this beautiful word. It gives us life today. I pray, Lord, that you would open every eye, every heart, every spirit in this place that is closed. So that as you open them, you can finally walk in take your place, take your throne, take your seat, take your rightful seat right at the center of our life. We know, Lord, that as you are with us, we know that nothing can ever be against us. Thank you so much, Jesus. In your name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand, everybody. Praise God. Give a big hand to all the videos. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Touch somebody beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. While you're at it, tell that person you look good. <laughs> Everybody, tell somebody beside you you're holier than you think you are. No, brother Bo, no, no, you don't understand. You don't know the mess I've done. You don't know the sins I've committed. Well, God knows.
and He made you His house. You're, you're His house. You're His property. And, and that's what Audi was trying to tell you, that you really are holier than you think you are because of the holiness of God in you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Today is going to be a, a great series um, ending. For two Sundays, we're going to talk about something powerful. And it's from the book of Ephesians. We're going to read verse 6, I'm sorry, verse 10 onwards. You want to read together? together. Everybody say, finally, draw your strength from the Lord and from His mighty power. Put on the what? Armor. The armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the tactics of the devil. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the principalities, with the powers, with the world rulers of the present darkness, with the evil spirits in the heavens. Therefore, say that again with me, therefore put on the armor of God that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. If you read through Ephesians chapter 6, and that's what we will be doing today and next week, we're going to look at the seven-piece armor that St. Paul is describing to us. If you want to fight the devil, you need this armor. We're going to go through them one by one. Are you ready? In fact, what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to ask somebody to assist me to be able to show to you the armor of God. All right. Woo! You look confused. Are you Justice League or Avengers? You've got Superman here in front. Captain America. And the sword of Wonder Woman. But we're going to use this just as a graphic example of what the armor is. The first thing is, is this, the belt. The belt, St. Paul says, is the belt of truth. You need truth to fight the devil. And then you need a sword. Where's the sword? You need a sword. St. Paul says this is the word of God. And then you need the helmet. The helmet is the helmet of salvation. And then the Bible says this is the shield of faith. And then the Bible says this is the breastplate of righteousness. And then all of it, he says, cover it with prayer. At the end of the day, the armor is really you. When you pray, when you believe in the truth, when you read the word and allow the word to be in your heart. Am I making sense to you? Let's give it a big hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share the belt as truth and the sword as the Word of God. We're going to start with that, and then we'll plod through our way through all that armor. Are you ready? Yes. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 and 17, read with me please. So stand ready with truth as a belt, tight around your waist, and the Word of God, as the sword which the Spirit gives you. So, if you want to fight the devil, you've got a whole grasp on the truth and the source of truth, which is the Word of God. Ask me why. You know, Jesus said this, John chapter 8, verse 44. He gave a title to the devil. He called the devil the father of lies. Please understand this. And I shared this last Sunday. The devil has no power over you unless you lend him power through your fear. The power of the devil comes from your fear. And your fear is based on his lies. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every, behind every spiritual defeat is a spiritual deception. 
Behind every spiritual loss is a spiritual lie. You began to believe in his lies about you, about God, about truth, about life. And that's why you began to develop fear. And the only way to fight him is to hold on to truth. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you a very simple story about something that happened to me about four years ago. Can I? When I'm going to, you know, as I share this story, you know, a part of me is embarrassed to share this story with you because it's so silly. But then I, I tell myself I should share it. I want to share it because it will encourage some people. I went through something like a midlife crisis about five years ago. I shared this already with you. My mom passed away. And I thought I was really okay after my mom passed away, but then, you know, I began to meet some very big problems in ministry, and the combination of both just brought me into some, some form of depression. Maybe not full-blown depression, but, but, but just there, almost there, and I, it, it really was hard. But for four months after, I felt I was better. And you know, when I share this to people, people like kind of, some, I, I love sharing and ask me why. Because some people think that, oh, Brother Bo, uh, I remember I, I was received this as comments in, in my Facebook, you know, Brother Bo, do you, do you have problems? <laughs> and, Hello, pinch me, you know, prick me with a pin. I bleed, I'm a human being. But, you know, oh, Bo, you, 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 you're so powerful with the Word of God. I'm sure you, you're, you're, you don't go through fear or you, go, you don't go through sadness. Hello, I do. And that's why I love sharing it. Because it, if you think that I don't go through that, that will be a very discouraging thing for you. But if you know that I go through it, my dear friends, you know when I preach, my first audience is that I preach to myself. Am I making sense to you? Because I need to hear what I'm preaching about. So, continue the story. After about four months, I felt better. And I thought the worst was over. And in, in one sense, it was. You know? And after a few months, I felt better. I felt okay. And then all of a sudden, my emotional equilibrium was shattered again with something so simple, so small, it's almost embarrassing to tell you. You know what happened? Ask me what? A toothache. I'm not kidding. I had a toothache. I went to the dentist, and the dentist said, well, Bo, we tried saving it. We couldn't save it. We have to pull it out. And I said, oh, pull it out. And then I remembered some time back, I already had one tooth pulled out, and they put a denture. And, and you don't see it so much because it's at the back. And now she's going to pull another molar, also at the back. So I have a second denture. I have two dentures. <sighs> I'm getting old. <laughs> and then, right after that, I began to sense or feel that there's this nagging ache right here on my left arm. I didn't know why. I rested, it was still there. I went to massage, it was still there. I went to a therapist, it was still there. And I said, why? It was not intense. The pain was not intense, but it was just a nagging ache. And, and I, I, you know, it was bothering me that I could not get rid of it. So, toothache, full tooth, denture, aching arm. Third thing, and this is like the last, proverbial last straw that broke the camel's back. And, and you're gonna laugh when I say this, and I'll, I give you the permission to do so. <laughs> One morning, I woke up, I looked at the mirror, and I saw wrinkles that I didn't see before. <laughs> now, I want you to know 
that vanity is the least of my weaknesses. My wife tells me that I don't care for how I look, and it's true. I leave the house, I walk out the door without even combing my hair, even looking at the mirror. I mean, that's the last thing that I do. But that morning, that precise morning, when I look in the mirror and I saw these lines in my face that I never saw before, I said, I'm old. <laughs> You know, when my teeth are falling out, I've got this ache in my arm, I've got these, I look horrible in that mirror. And, and you, you can, can I Photoshop the mirror? I mean, hello. And, and you know, when, when this, 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 you're, this, is, this is embarrassing, but, but when I would take my selfie, you know, an, an actress, a, Friend of mine, very popular, she told me, TV personality, she said, you know, Bo, when you post on Instagram and in Facebook, you've got to go through this editing tool. <laughs> and, and there's a way, you know, you just press this button and, and then wipe out your wrinkles. <laughs> and, and so my friend, you know, taught me how to do it. And so every time I took a selfie, I would, I would erase those wrinkles. <laughs> but you know, deep down inside, I was saying, my gosh, I get it. You, you, you know what hit me? Ask me what? Th this truth hit me like a baseball bat hitting my head. I realized one day I'm like a vintage car. <laughs> Once upon a time when, it, when I was young, I was glorious and beautiful and shiny. Now, parts are conking and falling apart one by one. And I felt, I felt pity, self-pity, you know, conquered me and my consciousness. And, and there was this dark cloud hovering on top of me. And I, 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 I entered this, this sadness. And you won't believe this. I began to have morbid thoughts. I began to think, I'm dying. <laughs> you know how illogical depression is? You know, when, when, you, when you get depressed, or, 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 or at least, you know, moving towards that direction. You don't think right. And, and you know, when you hear people jump out of buildings and kill themselves, many times, they, most of the time, it's done without, without control anymore. They, they, logic throws out, flies out of the window. And, and, you know, the reason why I'm sharing this to you, ask me why. To let you know these feelings are normal. And, and if you're feeling it, it's okay. If you're feeling it right now, you're normal. You're, you're not abnormal. And there, there's a second reason why I'm sharing it. Ask me why. why? That if somebody, you know, if, if you feel this way, you share it. If you're depressed, you're discouraged, you grab a person's arm, you grab a friend and you say, can I share to you what I'm going through? Because the moment you share it, it is so much better. And if somebody grabs your arm and tells you, Alamon, I, 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 I feel sad, I don't know why. Please, if somebody does that to you, don't say, Wala yan. Please don't do that. Be there. Listen to that person. And tell that person, look, I'm going to be here for you. I don't care if this is one day old, or this will last for one week, or this will last for two months, or this will last for six months. I'm going to be here for you until you get over this season. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there I was with this, with this storm of, of, of darkness around me. And I, I began to think, oh gosh, I'm gonna die. Who will take care of my wife? Who will take care of my kids? It was that crazy. And I, sh and I, I shared it to my wife. I said, sweetheart, can I share something to you? And she said, what? And I said, you know, I, you know, and my, my toothache, and you know that, you know, they pulled, pulled my tooth and then I was pain in my arm. And then after that, I, I saw wrinkles. And then I started laughing. She, she didn't laugh, but I laughed. And then I saw wrinkles and, <laughs> and then I started laughing. I said, how silly can I be? I began to think that I'm dying. And, and she laughed and I laughed. And, 
and it felt so much better. And we prayed, and it, it's just so good to share. And then this is what I did, because this is my experience. Whenever I'm caught in that quagmire of sadness, etc., I know what I'm gonna do. Ask me what? Reframe. It's all about reframe. It's all about getting a new pair of eyeglasses. Removing one eyeglass was based on a lie. It was all a lie from the enemy that you're dying, you know, malfunctioning. You know, your body's going, you know. It was all a lie, and I believed in the lie. But I made that decision in my mind, no, no. One of the things that I do to reframe is to welcome gratitude in the room. You see, I've long learned, I've long learned that gratitude and anger cannot coexist. You cannot put gratitude and sadness together. One will have to go away. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That gratitude and fear cannot coexist. One will have to go away. So I began to welcome gratitude into, the, into my heart. I began to say, you know, Lord God, I want to thank you that yes, some parts of my body are conking out, but, but, Lord God, thank you that, that, that other parts are not. And, and uh, thank you that, that, that I can stand. Thank you, Lord, that I can see. Thank you, Lord, that I can hear. Thank you, Lord, that I can think. Thank you, Lord, that, that I can walk. Thank you, Lord, that I can dance. My, my wife hates my dancing, but, but, but at least I pretend that I'm dancing. And you know, I, I, I began to thank God, thank God, thank God. And, and, and little by little, the sadness began to drain in my heart. Can you just touch a body beside you and just say, welcome gratitude. <laughs> if, if you could just be more grateful, you know, and then God spoke to me. This is what happens when you, when you begin to give up the lie of the devil and you begin to hold on to the truth. God began to speak to my heart and God began to say, Bo, you are not just your body. You are also your soul and your spirit and your heart and your mind and your passion and your imagination and your intellect and all that is strong and vibrant and dynamic. And, and, and I began to say, wow, it's true, it's true, it's wonderful, hallelujah. I, I, I just began to have more joy and more joy in my heart as the days went by. And, and, and when I began to feel better, you know what happened? You remember this nagging ache in my arm? You know what happened to that? I found out why. Once upon a time, months, months, months ago, I met this quack therapist who told me, you know, Bo, the right posture of sleeping is how babies sleep. And do you know how babies sleep? I said, huh? Ah. And this guy said, two arms above your head. <laughs> and, and I looked at that, I, I like self-experimenting. So I said, okay, I'll try it out. So I did, first night, second night, and I got used to it, and that's how I slept, every night. And so that day when I was feeling better already, you know, I had this idea. Hmm, I wonder if the pain comes from sleeping like that. <laughs> and so one night, I stopped, changed my position. On the second night, the pain disappeared. And here's what I realized. I wasn't dying after all. I was just dumb <laughs> for believing in that guy. But, but, you know what I realized? Truth is powerful. When you're caught up in fear, when you're caught up in depression, when you're caught up in, 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 in anger and resentment, I want you to start being grateful. Welcome more gratitude in your heart and hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth. Today, we're going to move into the next two pieces of armor. I don't want to preach this one. I'm going to invite a fellow preacher. You know, it, it's, it is always such a joy for me to bring in front of you a fellow feast builder. He is a feast builder from Bikutan. 
and so many people are coming to know Jesus because of this young man. And I want you to welcome Velden Lim. Good morning. My name is Belden Lim and I'm the feast builder of Feast SM Bikutan. And today I'm launching as well my first book, Bakit Single Ka pa rin? Taas nga ang kamay ng mga single dito. Ayan. Kaya kayo single eh. Pag tinanong ko, sino single dito? Dapat ko dito ang sagot, 0917715553, gano'n. Kasi baka marinig, kinukuha na pala nung katabi mo yung number mo. Ayan. I wrote this book, Bakit Single Ka Pa Rin? Mga kalukohang pinaniwalaan mo tungkol sa pag-ibig. You see, bakit ito sinulat? Kasi growing up, a lot of us, wala tayo masyadong alam sa pag-ibig. Yung natutunan natin lahat ng alam natin sa pag-ibig, saan? Sa mga telenovela, sa mga fairy tale. And that's why we have believed a lot of myths about love and relationships. And because of that, marami sa atin pumasok sa mga maling relationships. And many people are broken today because they have believed so many myths about love. Kaya sinulat ko po itong libro na ito para sa mga single. Kung hindi ka single, okay lang. Irigalo mo ito sa mga kaibigan mong single. Today, this is available dyan po sa book table. 200 pesos po. Ayan. Pero merong special offer ang Shepherd's Voice Publications. Kapag ka binili nyo itong book namin, kabandel ng book ni siya na sino na is it time to quit your job, you will only get it for 3.75. Dalawang libro na. Ayan. And, I have good news to you today. Bakit? Dahil nag-launch ako ngayon sa Feast Bay area. Uh, I'm giving away, magbibigay ako ng libre ngayong araw na ito. Libre autograph tsaka picture pag bumili kayo nitong kopya ng libro ko. Ayan. Kaya lang ako talaga nandito para magbenta ng libro. Biro lang po. So yung iba sa inyo, pag tinatawang yung iba, Brother, pwede ba akong bumili niyan? Share na lang kami ng kaibigan ko. Pwede naman, kaso nga lang pag nagka-boyfriend ka, share din kayo ng kaibigan mo ha. <laughs> But I believe, pag binasa mo itong libro na ito, tatawa ka, maya maya, tinatamaan ka. Maya maya, tatawa ka, maya maya, tinatamaan ka. Maya maya, tatawa ka, tapos maya maya, tinatamaan ka. After mo basahin itong libro na ito, baliw ka na, gano'n. <laughs> But I believe this book will really bless you, especially a lot of singles. This is not a guarantee na magkaka-boyfriend ka. But here's what I guarantee you. When you read this book, you will definitely enjoy your single life even more. Amen? Amen. Now let me go back to the talk. And let me continue the talk. The breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. Next slide. Ephesians 6.14 says there that with righteousness as your breastplate and accept salvation as a helmet. You see, kailangan natin yung dalawang bagay na yan. Righteousness and salvation. Let me go first with righteousness. Here's what I believe in. If you want to win over evil in this world, you need to do what's right. Tama ba? Naalala ko yung story na ito. Uh, uh, earlier this year, this summer, our youth in Feast SM Bikutan along with other youth in the Feast Alabang District. We had our youth camp, our camp Kalye. And there, meron akong isang servant doon, umatin siya kasama yung kanyang younger sister. And then there's a portion in that um, retreat, in that camp, youth camp, wherein yung mga participants, yung mga kabataan, they are letting out their grudges, their resentments, lahat ng mga, lahat ng mga galit nila sa puso. And during those pray that prayer session, alam nyo, meron isang bata doon, yung kapatid ng servant namin, biglang na-possess. So talagang, he, she was shaking uncontrollably, tapos nagsasalita, naging boses lalaki. So everybody was, was quite shocked and afraid. And so, the servants knew what to do. Kinuha nila yung bata, itinabi nila sa isang tabi, they prayed the prayer for deliverance, and then in no time, okay na, yung bata na na-possess. Balik na ulit sa normal. However, when they were coming home, okay naman lahat. Ito ang problema. Pag puwi nila sa bahay, that was Sunday night, biglang na-possess na naman yung bata. Biglang shaking and control of reboses lalaki. And then nagulat ako, may nag-message sa akin, Brother Velden, can I call you? Yung servant namin, emergency lang po sa, sa Facebook Messenger app ko. So, biglang, so, sinagot ko yung tawag niya, sabi ko sa kanya, oh, ano nangyari? Sabi niya, 
Brother Vendek, hindi ko po alam gagawin ko kasi po yung, yung kapatid ko na, na possess, shaking uncontrollably and then kung ano ano sinasabi, natatakot kami, baka kunin siya ng kalaban. Alam niyo kung ano sabi ko sa kanya? Sabi ko sa kanya, relax ka lang. Huwag ka masyadong matakot. Alam niyo kung bakit? Tanong niyo sa akin bakit? Kasi hindi ko na alam yung gagawin. <laughs> But seriously, nung una rattled ako, pero alam niyo na alala ko na ano, hindi, hindi ako dapat matakot. Sabi ko sa kanya, relax ka lang. Why? Because I believe the devil is already a defeated enemy. Amen? Amen. Kaya alam mo, nagpapapansin yan bakit naiinggit yan, bakit alam niya yung kapatid mo, babalik na kay Lord. Na mapapalapit kay Lord. Kaya lahat ng tactics ginagawa niya para kunin ka, kunin siya ulit, palayo kay Lord. Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, relax ka lang. And then here's what I remembered. I know that every diocese para sa nakaalaman ng lahat. Every diocese has a resident exorcist priest. So, kung meron mang possession kayo na experience, let it be known to you that you can contact the diocese and then there can, they can set an exorcist priest that specializes on that. And sabi ko sa kanya, dalin mo sa pare yung, yung kapatid mo. But sabi, sabi, eh, hindi ko kilala yung resident exorcist priest. Sabi ko, basta, dalin mo na lang kinabukasan sa pare, sa simbahan, and then let her confess to the priest. The priest knows what to do with her. They know a deliverance prayer, and they have the capacity, they have the faculty to to drive out demons and to pray the prayer of deliverance. So sabi ko sa kanya yun. However, bago natapos yung conversation namin, tinanong ko siya nito, sabi ko sa kanya, what do you think triggered the possession? And you know what she said? Sabi niya, alam mo, Brother Velden, feeling ko na possess siya. Nung, nung part na sa prayer session, nilalabas namin yung grudges. So sabi ko sa kanya, bakit? Meron ba siyang galit sa puso niya? Sabi niya, yes. Kasi three months na po silang hindi nag-uusap masyado ni Mama. Cold war. Cold war. Hindi nagpapansinan magkagalit. At sabi ko sa kanya, immediately sabi ko, alam ko na. Oh, here's what you do, ah. Tomorrow, bring her to the priest. Let her confess. But afterwards, I want her to go to your mom. Tell her to ask and uh, ask for apology. Magsorry siya sa mama niya. Tapos siya kape niya pagkatapos. Pag-usapan nila. You know what happened? Kinabukasan, ginawa nila yun. Tapos tumawag sa akin yung itong new servant namin. Kuya Velden, ito po, okay na. Okay na rin sila ni mama. Okay na, okay na. Wala na rin yung demonyo. Hindi na rin siya napoposes. Sabi ko sa akin, kita mo na. Alam ko yan eh. Why? Because I believe that the best way to fight the evil one is to become Jesus to others. But here's the good news. Alam niyo? Yung good news? Yung kapatid niya, malayo kay Lord, dinala niya sa kamkali. Today, that girl is serving in our feast in SM Bikutan every single Sunday. But wait, there's more. Yung, yung nanay niya at yung buong pamilya niya na matagal nang mat, wala, malayo kay Lord ngayon, every Sunday nag-a-attend ng feast SM Bikutan as well. Why? You need to be Jesus. And how can you become Jesus? Ask me how! Simple lang. Bumili kayo ng libro ko. Iregalo nyo doon sa mga nangangailangan nito. Ayan, 200 pesos lang po dyan. May libre pang autograph tsaka picture. Biro lang po, talagang, talagang sinisingit ko lang para maka, di nyo makakalimutan. But you see, I believe righteousness, it's not about being perfect. Tama? Why? Because the truth is this, we can never be perfect. Di ba? No matter how hard we try, we cannot be perfect. In fact, I, I also know that. Bakit? Kasi... Minsan kami mga preacher, mga feast builder, a lot of responsibilities on our back. Bakit? People expect us to be like Brother Bo Sanchez, holy, blameless, super bait, saintly. Eh kami naman ang layo-layo namin doon, lalo na ako. Naalala ko ito one time, I was driving along Makati, Paseo de Rojas. Tapos I was driving, I'm in the passenger, I, I, I'm the driver's seat, and then my wife is in the passenger side. Sa likod namin, may nakisabay na servant ng feast SM Bigutan. Habang nagdadrive ako, I missed a left turn. So logically, I will, to, to get to my destination, I need to take the next U-turn slot. 
Tama ba? I'll take the next U-turn and then turn right again. Ito ang problema. When I was approaching the next U-turn slot, in the, the next intersection, may malaking karatula nakasulat, No U-turn. Sabi ko, naku, no U-turn? Anong gagawin ko? So, anong ginawa ko? Tumingin ako sa orasan ko, 11.30 na ng gabi. Tumingin ako sa kanan, walang pulis. Tumingin ako sa kaliwa, walang pulis. So, anong ginawa ko? Quickly, I turned around, U-turn. Pagka-U-turn na pagka-U-turn ko, ito na yung misis ko. Biglang gumatong, grabe. Si brother Velden ka pa naman. Grabe, preacher. Feast builder, hindi ka na nahiya. May servant sa likod natin. Nung sinabi niya may servant, sabi ko, Shucks! Oo nga pala. So sabi ko, oh, bigla, nagpalusot na lang ako, ay, may karatula ba? Palusot na lang. Di ba? Kaya alam nyo, simula nun, hindi na ako nagsabay ng servant sa poche. Hindi, <laughs> I always made it a point that I am a righteous, I behave properly, that I do loving things, that I am like Jesus. Bakit? Hindi lang ako yung nakatingin sa akin. Meron din ibang taong sumusunod sa akin. But here's the thing, my dear friends. Alam nyo? I, I believe God honors our struggle. Mahirap magpaka-righteous. Mahirap magpaka-holy. But God honors your struggle. And you see, here's what I would like to tell you. Please don't look for perfection. You will never be perfect. Instead, look for progress. Amen? Amen. For example, nag-attend ka ng feast dito, dati kung magmura ka 9,999 times a day. After three times mo nag-attend ng feast, 9,998 times ka lang na nagbumura. Huwag kang mabahala. Okay lang yun. Progress pa rin yun. But God is patient. Amen? Why? Because we can never be perfect. Instead, here's what you do. Aim for progress. Why? Because this is what's important. That every single day, palapit ka ng palapit, you're getting closer and closer and closer to Jesus. Until one day, people will mistake you as somebody. Uy, hindi ba si Jesus yun? Why? Because you have gone closer and closer to Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Can I invite you to stand up? Tell the person beside you, you're holier than you think you are. You're holier than you think you are. You see, righteousness is not about perfection. And here's the truth. You don't need to please God not to be accepted. Huh? You, you try to do the right things, not because you want to gain the acceptance of God. You try to do the right things because it's the right thing to do, period. Because it's the loving thing to do, period. Because you want to impact the world, period. Not because you want to gain the acceptance of God. Why? Because God has already accepted you. God has already forgiven you. God has already loved you. God has already embraced you, no matter what you have done and wherever you have been. And that's salvation. Hindi mo na kailangan kitain yung salvation ng Panginoon. Why? You're already loved. All you need to do is to just open yourself and embrace Him. Get that love. Why? God is already here. No need to try very hard to be accepted. And here's the thing, my dear friends. Alam nyo, kung abang you hear, kahit sumusunod na kayo kay Lord, you're attending the feast, you still encounter problems. Tapos yan ka ba? Parang sinabi ko, tinanong ko sino humihing nga, no? <laughs> Let me tell you this, you know what? The devil is the prince of lies. And you see, he will always try to rob your confidence. But let me tell you this, the devil can never take away your calling. That's why the devil will always try to take away your confidence. Minsan lumalapit ka kay Lord, feeling mo, bakit ka nun, Lord, biglang ang dami kong problema, lubog ako sa utak, bakit ka nun, Lord, binayin ka na ako ng boyfriend ko, ng girlfriend ko, bakit ka nun, Lord, kung kailan ako sumusunod sa'yo, biglang may nagkasakit sa pamilya, let me tell you this. Because that's how the devil wants to trick you. He's trying to take away your confidence because he can never take away your calling. That's why, brothers and sisters, today, I'd like you to back on the truth. 
that God is with you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, therefore God lives in you. And you are holier than you think you are. You are better than you think you are. You are greater than you think you are. And you see, my dear friends, whenever the devil is trying to take away your confidence, nalulula ka na sa problema, remember this, I want you to look at the devil right straight in his eye and tell him, Yes, my problem is big. Yes, you may seem big, but my God is bigger than you. And that God lives in me. Therefore, I'm bigger than you. Whenever you lose confidence, whenever the devil discourages you, always remember that God is in you. If he has done it in the past, he can always do it again for you in the future. Amen? Amen. You're holier than you think you are. Because God is in you. Can I invite you to prayer? Close your eyes, bow down your heads. Put your hands towards your chest. Say this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for living inside of me. I know, I'm bigger than the enemy, greater than the enemy, holier than the enemy, because I am loved by you, and you live in me. I will not be discouraged, for you have never failed me. You are always faithful. And for that, I believe better things are coming my way. This I pray. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Worship the Lord now, brothers and sisters. He never failed us. And He never will.
that journey, whatever you're facing, whatever difficulty or challenge or storm you're going through, Jesus is beside you. He will never, never leave you, never abandon you, even for one moment. He's going to hold your hand every step of the way. And I, I want you now just to welcome that presence of God in your life. And just say this after me. Father, thank you. You are the center of my life. I follow you. You are my king. And I will serve you forever. Whatever I 